So this video is going to be about interactive render filters or IRF in Katana. So many lighters out there will uh, relate to me when I talk about optimizing settings for your render. Where you might be, where we've got resolution, uh, we can juggle resolution up and down, then you may come to your, uh, to your globals and you'll jack up your sample quality to get the the best balance of quality versus sampling and, and render time. So you'll be balancing these settings all the time. Um, and you want to jump down to like a preview level and back up again to a high resolution or a publish level. And this can get tedious sometimes. In the old days, there was much of a, many notepads on the table recording values on, on nodes and um, settings and or dealing with um, presets in um, things like Maya and stuff. Uh, but there's a really intuitive system in Katana for this, and that's the interactive render filters. So the IRF is a node we can just create, IRF, and that'll bring it up. And what we can do with that is pop nodes in here that when we render in the Katana UI, so doing live rendering or preview rendering, it will apply these... Uh, I guess they're, they're presets, but they call them interactive render filters because they're not actually, you're not selecting a preset and it applies those for good in your scene. It's actually just applying to your preview renders. So just your interactive renders. So what I've got in my setup that I use here, it's a pretty basic one compared to studio ones I've seen, but it does the job. I've got two categories. I've got sampling and I've got resolution. I'll show you up here actually on the in the UI. This is the final result. So just having this node in your graph, notice it's not connected to anything. It's just sitting in the graph. That's all you need with this node. It's a special node where it doesn't have to be connected. Once you've got it in the scene, it will connect to this UI bar up here, the little button. And I can choose whether I want tiny sampling. This is my laptop I'm recording on now. So uh, a render this small is, is quite adequate for software demos. But I can uh, clear that out and drop in different ones what I want. Also different types of sampling and I can choose those uh, as I need and juggle my settings. And all the settings inside of these uh, nodes have been custom set by me. So I'll show you how I put that together. So I'll delete this so we can start again. It's probably going to throw some errors but yeah that's fine. So uh, there's none in here now. So if we create a interactive IRF and I place that down. So what we do is we hit the little plus here and that creates a render filter and we give it a name. So I'm going to call this um, small res Oops, caps lock. small res and then we add a node to that name. If we come here um, the node that controls my resolution is a render settings node. So I can just search for that node and select it. I'll maximize this pane just while we're working on this. Um, so we can make a setting for small res. So let's say um, a small res 960 by 540. Uh, and you'll notice that this one goes yellow. That means we have a local assignment on the attribute. You'll see these all through Katana. And if we want to disable them, we can turn them off or put them on. Uh, basically, the, the yellow attributes on Katana are the things you've changed in the slide and everything else is default. So if you're looking for, for things that you've set in any parameter pane anywhere, look for the yellow. Uh, yellow and that will show you your local assignments. So with this that's actually now set up all we want to do is give it a give it a category so I'll make my category resolution okay so we've got render settings one is that you may worry that this says camera and in my scene the, the main cameras are called uh, shot one and catacam or whatever uh, if we don't in the IRF window if we don't put anything in here it gets ignored so we're only going to pass on the resolution in here. So these are a special sort of area. And we can add multiple nodes. So this render filter, this small res, 
it could be uh, it could be controlling resolution sampling and everything all in one node we could do that as well so design your own how you like to work um, but don't go medium and so on and so forth uh, can create as many as I like you can duplicate them as well which will speed you up a little bit if we duplicate it and just rename that and just change the resolution we're working at uh, and then go from there so I'll also make categories so when we make separate ones I'll make another category called sampling and add uh, PRMN globals and that one I could go through and tweak all the the sample settings or just I'll use the presets for now and we'll call that a uh, low sampling because that one's using the draft preset so like I said before just because this is in the scene we'll now have access to those render filters and we can middle mouse drag them on as we want clear them out and that will override our viewport so we're not so we can leave production settings on all the time on these nodes so we can just leave um, our high sampling um, whatever whatever quality we want on this node and the render settings and AOVs and know that it's going to work but it will only show us in the GUI the res that we want to use when we do a disk render or execute a batch render outside of Katana it's going it's going to ignore the IRF every time so interactive render filters design your own share them on the forums uh, yeah, make uh, macros for different renderers you use. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with them. Great feature in Katana. So, hope you learned something. Thank you very much.